While George was basking in the sun-drenched Caribbean, I went to London. Yep. Typical it was a England. Long shot, but I thought I'd start my search for the Jaguar stone at the British Museum. <gasps> those two look familiar. Are those the two Japanese tourists from Lee's Gallery in Breconsword 1? Are they going to speak Japanese and give me a hernia? Let's, let's, let's find out. Am I going to cringe almost to death? Bonjour. I wonder if you could help me. <laughs> What's so funny? <laughs> oh, never mind. Oh, God. Oh, I thought that almost threw up then. Why, why would they just get some random... Just random woman to pretend to be Japanese? It's cringy. It's bad enough when people try to speak it different was languages. It stone identical in size and style to the Coyote stone. Oh, you see? However, this stone jaguar. bore the image of a jaguar. Good old jaguar. Yeah, I can't stand uh, these two girls. They're annoying. I, I mean, I probably wouldn't have mind when I think, you know. But <laughs> it's it's so bad. Like. An accent is one thing, but trying to speak a language you know absolutely nothing about, it's just, it's, I, I don't, I don't know why I'm, I don't, I don't, I don't, I don't know why it bothers me so much. It pisses me off. Angers me. Physically, physically angers me. Look at this stuck up, snooty twat. These are some gaudy ass statues, aren't they? So, you know. It was a small, flat square of polished obsidian. Nothing like the one I was looking for. Really? According to the caption, this was the scrying mirror given to Dr. John Dee by Sir Francis Drake. I think that's bullshit, if you ask me. There was a huge carving of somebody who must have been important once. Obviously me. This is more like me. This is like a Buddha. I wanted nothing to do with that statue. It made me nervous somehow. What? The carving looked Buddhist in subject, but Mesoamerican in execution. That's weird. <laughs> Some... Very odd. Why did she walk around the attendant? The cabinet contained a dagger decorated with Mayan designs. Can I take it? The cabinet was locked. God damn it. Right, Mr. Attendant. Can I help you, miss? Oh, thank God it's not posh. What can you tell me about that stone with a jaguar on it? The so-called jaguar stone was brought back from the Americas by Sir Francis Drake and presented, with, as you already know, the more famous scrying mirror, to John Dee. What's this scrying mirror? It's a little square of polished obsidian. Mine it is. And what does it do? Well, it's a bit like a crystal ball. Except flat and black. And you can't see anything in it. Old man D had a psychic who reckoned he could speak to the angels through it. I think he was taking D for a ride myself. The old loony didn't like the stone, though. Reckoned it was tainted by the devil. Come along, miss. I'll show you the mirror. I've already... Oh, never mind. There's... Bought an gnarly beard, or he's just got incredible chest John hair. Dee's famous scrying mirror, given to him by Francis Drake. Do you know if this mirror has any relevance to Tezcatlipoca? Who? Tizetlik... Tizletli... I can't even say it. Ah, oh, there's someone here who'll be able to help you better than me. This young lady has some questions oh. to ask, Professor. It's Ubio. I think she's from France. Professor Ubier? Eh? What? You two know each other, do you? Uh, excuse me, the telephone. So you come to get the Jaguar stone? It's my stone, you old bastard. I didn't think we about it. Again. Mademoiselle, France, eh? Yes, I believe that's where you live, Professor. I have a house there, on the outskirts of Paris, but I haven't been back for many months. 
Yes, Mr. is like he's obviously French, but he has literally no French accent. This is the type of person like the catch sisters where you slowly oh no again it said months didn't they years you'd you'd lose your accent but not months i don't know the accents are all over the place then you got these two stupid what the hell was that noise that's weird at least this guy's like correct speaking is a londoner well he sounds from london anyway uh i thought you were going to stay in Quaramonte to witness the eclipse yeah alas Business comes first. An important consignment of artifacts on loan to the British Museum. But I intend to return to Quaramonte in plenty of time. Oh, it was again. Like someone's sneezing. Professor Oubier, your taxi's here. If you'll excuse me, I have some urgent business to attend to at the docks. He's took the stone, hasn't he? Yeah, the stone's gone. Can you answer me some questions about the Jaguar stone? Certainly, miss. If you just step this way. How did he steal the stone without setting off the alarm? That's a terrible fucking alarm system right there. It's gone. Some sods have inched it. <laughs> half inched? Nicked. Stolen it, miss. Never mind. The silent alarm will have been tripped. I'm afraid nobody can leave until our crack security team gets here. How long will that take? Could be a while. I think it's their tea break. The thief could be miles away by then. Don't you worry about that, miss. Just don't try to leave. It was too much of a coincidence that Oubier showed up and the stone promptly disappeared. I didn't have time for their crack security team to finish their tea. I had to get after him. Yeah, I won't touch the British either. I won't trust me at all. This crack security team. If the British, they're going to be fucking useless. Don't you think it's suspicious that Oubie has urgent business at the docks? Not in the slightest, young lady. He's gone to oversee the unloading of cargo, an exhibition of Mayan sculpture on loan from Mexico City. What's the name of the ship? The Zibalba Princess, moored down by Tower Bridge. Why do you ask? Hmm... Just wondering. I didn't steal the stone. I was nowhere near it. So who do you suppose did steal it? Who do you think stole it, you? Oh, yes. That's supposed to be that guy. I thought this was like his chest hair. That's supposed to be a moustache. I don't... Isn't this like his... I... Sounds like somebody's sneezing in the background. Sounds like the guy, um from Lockman, the the dude who we stole the piece of wire from. I don't know why it sounds like there's somebody sneezing. It's I've never noticed it before. It's so weird. It must have been Oubier. Oh, begging your pardon, but he's a man of letters. A professor. So yeah. was Mariati. Yeah. Man of letters or not, he's your culprit. Hey, you bonehead. You didn't just let him walk out the fucking door. Thank you. You've been most helpful. Not really. It's supposed to be ambient noises in the museum, maybe? It sounds like they reused the, um... Sound bites from the first game. Can I get that dagger? The cabinet was locked. If we could right-click her purse... Yeah, she should empty it. There was nothing very useful in my bag. Just a single hair clip. Why are you carrying a fucking bag around if it's got nothing in it? It's so weird. That's the kind of thing Georges would do. Not me. Oh, come on, Nico. I didn't need to make a call. The cabinet was. Sure, she's got nothing else in there her bag. Was you wow. I know you have to. I know you have to get the dagger. It's not put to talk to these two stupid girls. Oh, there's a key it's there. Probably I didn't see that. Sneaky. Now I'm gonna steal shit. 
I got. I guys you didn't know there was that. I want to steal this. I don't think I need this. In fact, I don't think I need this at all. Oh. The key didn't fit this lock. Okay. The key unlocked the case. Why? Why would it unlock that case, but not the one with the scrying mirror? That's weird. Drink. No, I think we can show him the key. Take a look at this. <laughs> what are you doing with that? Just looking. What was it used for? It's a sacrificial dagger. And I'd feel a lot happier if you put it down. I think I need Thank the key. You. They don't... Come on, Nico. I need to pick up the key again, don't I? Can I... Stop, stop moving, damn it. I can't... <laughs> can't follow the bloody key. There you go. You need to show him the key. I locked the key. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Thank you. As if he didn't care about me having a dagger. Like, he should have took it off me. Surely. Let's show him the key. He should piss off back to the phone. What was it you wanted? Look at this. The thief left this key in the cabinet. Oh dear. Oh dear, oh dear, oh dear. That makes the theft an inside job, right? Oh dear. In other words, the thief was Professor Oubier. Well, let's leave that for the police to decide, shall we? I better phone them right away. Why would, why would he have a key? Back to the cabinets. Hello? I knew I had nothing to worry about if the police were called. Yes, I'll hold. But I had to catch up with Oubier, and fast. It's behind this curtain. So the reason we stole the dagger is purely to open this door. It's not looking. I levered the handle open with the thin dagger. I'm gone. <laughs> Bye. Meanwhile, back in the Caribbean. Ah, I love this place. This is such the a good room set had been piece. decorated to resemble the interior of a sailing ship. It was disturbingly effective. I don't know why he says disturbingly. I think it looks cool. Everyone knows pirates are cool. Oh bloody hell! This area is. Very nostalgic for me, uh, for me old bones. So let's have a look around. So we've got ship. The ship looked too fragile to touch. March twentieth, sixteen hundred and seventy fix. Engaged frigate off Fan Falvador. It was garbage. Huh. I guess being a pirate didn't require too many academic qualifications. The passage went on to describe how Ketch had got wind of the approach of a fleet of English ships. It seemed the new governor had not shared his predecessor's views on Ketch's activities. They were out for his blood. Sailed to that place where I made secure my fortune. I returned safe in the knowledge that the governor shall not discover that which I had hidden. For is it not writ that tis easier for a camel to pass through the eye of a needle? Hmm. Very suspicious. I don't think I've ever read that ship log before. I love the chart though. The passage through the eye and the okay. needle and the camera. I had my hands on an historical document. Now what? Put it in your pocket, George. Yeah, the camel and the needle thing come into play later. The chart fitted exactly into the recess on the top of the desk. I can spot in his glasses. Brilliant. Like that might come in useful in ticklish <laughs> situations. <laughs> he 
Ow! I should have known better than to put my hand in there. <laughs> Grandma Stobart had a nasty experience in a water butt once. Interesting. I would like to know more. Please. <laughs> it would have been easy to reach the cutlass and slip it in my pocket. It would also have been the most regrettable action of my life. Two bells and all's well. Pirates were cool. <laughs> it's like the best thing in this whole game is that George's pirates were cool. Pirates were cool. Captain Frederick Ketch, 1570. Around his neck was a cross. Maybe he was a part-time pirate. <laughs> the portrait might have made a nice souvenir, but it was too large to carry. Says the guy who's literally got a theotolite in his pants. That's... <laughs> That's no excuse, George. Hard a port, bosun. Aye, aye, Captain Stobart. She cannot take it, Captain. My lad's dead. Abandoned ship. Ah, <laughs> oh, George. Crazy, crazy bastard. So... Examining the sea chest. Hmm. Surprise! Creepy kid. What the? Who are you? I'm Emily. What were you doing in there, Emily? Hiding. What are you doing here? Grown-up stuff. Grown-ups? I'm never going to grow up, I'm not. You shouldn't be here. What's your name? I'm George. Pleased to meet you, Jaws. George. Jaws? Jeez. Make your mind up. <laughs> Do you know how to use a theodolite? We don't learn anything about surveying at my school. Not until fifth grade. That's weird. I would love to know about surveying at my school. That would have been cool. Would you like to play darts? No. Oh, come on. I'll throw you catch. <laughs> That's dangerous. <laughs> darts will stick in me and make me bleed. Damn it. That cross you're wearing, Emily. It's my lucky Jesus cross. It's just like the one Captain Ketch wore. Uh-huh. Can I borrow it? Uh-uh. What would you trade for that cross, Emily? A puppy. Well, I don't happen to have a puppy in my pocket right now. <laughs> Can you think of anything else you'd trade? Don't know. Look, an ancient Mayan stone. Is that a magic stone? Well, I don't know about that. No. It basically is. It's a spirit stone. Spirit magic. They're basically the same. Why don't you go play with Rio? I'm not allowed. How come? Because Aunt Frost says I'm not allowed out of the house. That's why, Mr. Nosy Beak. Too bad. Why don't you ask your other aunt if you can play with Rio? Aunt Mina's cuckoo. Aunt Frost says so. She says when the Lord handed out common sense, Aunt Mina was off getting double portions of chin. <laughs> what a savage thing to say. That Rio's a smart kid. He helped me out with Bronson. Rio is clever. He can spit ever so far. What can you tell me about Captain Ketch? That's him on the wall. In the picture. Yeah, I know. Scary looking guy, huh? He was my great, 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 great grandfather. Yeah, you have his eyes. <laughs> so, there's something very odd about Emily. I mean, you probably already know what I said before. But when you speak to her, watch how she turns. Why don't you run along? Aunt Mina told me. Well, that doesn't mean you oh, have to no. stay indoors, does it? Doesn't On a beautiful that. day like today? There's a storm coming. Oh, nuts. You don't know that. I do so. I can see the whole world from the window. Yeah, well, like I said, I'm busy. There were several things I wanted to say to that awful kid, <laughs> but I held my tongue. <laughs> That's what George has got against kids. Okay, so she normally turns. Maybe later. Oh, where's uh, Mina? <laughs> where's Bronson gone? 
Hopefully he's dead. Definitely killed him and threw him to the sharks, haven't they? they great whales patrol the Caribbean seas, don't they? Do they? Am I making shit up again? Probably am. Hey, Rio. Any use for a quill? What's a quill? It's what people used to write with in Captain Ketch's days. No, man. I'd sooner be fishing. Shit, I forgot to do something. Ah, you bonehead. Let's go back up here. Shit. There's one last thing to do with, with, with said cat. We need to show it the quill. There you go, pussycat. If a cat likes food, oh. The cat made short work of the feather, tearing it into a blizzard of small pieces. Oh, shit. I should be able to pick up the feather. Come on, George. There it is. Oh, my God. You don't understand how easy that is to miss. Like, stupidly hard to see. I'm meant to play on this game on an old CRT TV. You know, say, like, 13-inch TV I used to have in my bedroom when I was younger. Yeah. I try spotting tiny little fucking things on the floor like that on a smallest TV. <sighs> it's the the feather can be used as a lure. What are you? Oops. Uh, this. What you got there? I couldn't see why Rio would want the shredded quill. Oh, George. What do you give to a small, irritating girl who asks about everything? Try a conch. Delicate colors, interesting shape, and when you put it to your ear, you can hear the sea. Yeah, why is that? Usually because you're standing next to it. <laughs> Have you got one? Yeah, but I promise it to my sister. She well vexed with me. Why is your sister mad with you? Well, last night, when I got home with our supper, she went wild. Rio, she said. How come all you ever catch is puffer fish? A sick of puffer fish. What I want is tiger fish. So don't bother come back home till you catch one, boy. I don't see how I'm gonna catch no tiger fish. All I have is a fishing pole and a worm. Oh, you should tell your sister to catch your own fish. Hey, this is just what you need to make a fly. That's what you needed it for. Thanks. Let's hope them tiger fish hungry. A deal's a deal. Here's a conch. Nice. It's just what I needed. Thank you, my boy. I am doing things out of order, aren't I? I'm doing things before they happen. That's not how you play a video game. I mean, there's no wrong way to play it. It's just that if I do things the way I do it, it means I can skip going back and forth, I guess. So... I mean, the base, basically, the, the fish conversation with Rhea told you that the tiger fish like certain things, and the certain things happens to be a, um, a feather. Oops, I'm not. Hey, Emily. I've got the same name as my sister. It's a coincidence, isn't it? There you go. Here, I've got a conch. Would you like it? Dunno. Aunt Frost told me never to take presents from strange men. I'm not a strange man. Then why are you called Jaws, Jaws? That's a stupid name. I'm not called... Look, conch, pretty, swap for the cross, yes or no? Uh... Right, this thing's going out the window. Okay, we'll do swapsies. Nice. Pink. So we can look at the desk. That looked like that's where it was supposed to be. So I left it there. All right, George, don't get fucking. It was firmly attached. All right, you need to use the cross in uh, desk. The desk had obviously been cut to fit the chart, nor maybe vice versa. It's one of these you have to use. It was use. the holder for the quill. It was firmly. Not the holder. Inkwell? It was an indented well in the corner of the desk. I guess it was intended to hold ink, but it seemed unnecessarily wide. Maybe Ketch had used it to hold his rum bottles steady in heavy seas. Uh, cross in the inkwell?
What am I missing here? You used the cross. The desk had... That looked... Uh... Right in the pen holder. Okay, it goes in the pen holder. Ketcher's cross slipped snugly into the pen holder. What you doing, Jaws? Did you see how she turned? I put your cross in this little hole in the desk. Creepy was that. Why? Impulse mainly, with a dash of irrational intuition. Silly. Only women have intuition. Yeah, watch how she turns. There were several things. Oh, can't see when she turns. She doesn't turn normally. She, like, fades. Which is very, very weird. Uh, you need to use... This. The lantern. How did I miss the lantern, you blind dumbass? Holding that lantern, I felt kind of biblical. Like Jesus or... Or... Florence Nightingale. <laughs> yeah, it's because they are both... Both real people. I mean, Florence Nightingale was real. Jesus was fictional, wasn't it? The lantern or was he? so precisely in the inkwell, it could only be deliberate. What you doing now, Jaws? Knock it off, will ya? There's something you ought to know. I don't buy cute or lost puppy. I've put the lantern in the inkwell. See? It fits. Why? Because it was cut to fit. <laughs> Why? Because sneaky old Captain Ketch made it that way. Why? What is with all the questions? Because I'm interested. Why? Because I have the insatiable curiosity of the young. Why? All right. Truce. <laughs> the lantern cast a strong light over the desktop. The light cast a shadow of the cross. And the shadow fell precisely over a small, unnamed island shaped like a skull. That must be it. Catches Treasure Island. Uh-oh. That zombie island. It's a bad place. No kidding? Well, bad place or not, that's my next port of call. Can I come too? The hell you can. I never get to leave the house. That was odd to say. There were several things. Hmm. Can I take the cross with me? I wonder. Can I? Oh, no. Well, then. see you, Emily. The only way to get to the islands is to talk to Rio. Rio should take us by his boot. Zombie Island is a really great name for an island. It's got zombies on it. Zombie Island. Ah, keep clicking on the wrong fucking thing. This. Would you take me to uh, Zombie Island? In this weather? You're mad, man. The rain will keep the zombies indoors. Just say, I did meet a zombie. What would you do? There ain't no zombies on Zombie Island. At least, not anymore. It's uninhabited. Good. <laughs> what do you mean, not anymore? <laughs> not anymore. You still want what? to go? I guess. Well, I ain't had no luck with them tiger fish. And with the mood my sister is in, I'll be safer with the zombies. Cool. Got a free ride. The zombie island. <laughs> Screw you, Bronson. Why did he jam that umbrella up his ass? Thanks, kid. So, this was Zombie Island. Somehow I'd been expecting something more sinister. Come on, Rio. Let's find that treasure. No, thanks. I'm staying right here. Oh, come on. You said yourself there's no zombies left. Yeah. But that was while there was a big pile of seawater between me and this place. All me have now is this little bit between the boat and the shore, and I'm hanging on to it. I don't know if you're safer on the on Zombie Island than in the deep, dead river. 
I forgot the coal. No. It can't Holy be. Holy shit. As if the coal got all the way here. But it was. My lucky piece of coal. Amazing. Rio, how far away is Ketch's Landing from here? Best part of ten miles. Why? Ten miles? That catapult must have been a lot more powerful than I thought. Holy shit. That's crazy. I see. <laughs> lucky piece of coal. Never leave home if I have a lucky piece of coal. Okay, it looks like I'm scaling this cliff. The cliff was steep. Too steep to climb without handholds. And George. And I couldn't find any. Okay. Look at the boat. Leo's boat was strewn with fishing nets and tackle. I love that fishing net. Please. That Emily sure asks a lot of questions. Reset man, this whole Emily business just isn't funny. Look, we're obviously at cross purposes here. I'm talking about Emily Ketch. Yeah, and so am I. She was my friend. Her aunts hated it, but we did move together, you know. She used to be real keen at hide and seek. It could take hours to find her. One time, the last time, it took years. She must have shouted and screamed herself hoarse, but there was nobody to hear her. Where'd she hidden herself? Captain Ketch's old sea chest. The only way to open it was from the outside. Suddenly, I didn't feel so good. We never exchanged another word about Emily Ketch. That sentence right there still gives me the chills. The fact that Emily Ketch that we spoke to was a fucking ghost. Like, I never noticed this when I first played the game. It's in fact multiple playthroughs and never understood what he meant. But if you when you talk to Emily and she turns, she doesn't turn physically, she fades. Which would mean that she's a ghost. But the fact that she has that the fact that we could get the cross from her is kind of weird. That's always, you know, it's always been a bit odd. The fact that you could exchange an item for her and she could touch it physically. You know, ghosts are normally corporeal, aren't they? Don't normally have a form, but yeah, she's a fucking ghost. She's a fucking ghost. So we spoke to a ghost, and George just po pooped his pants. I was pants. quite happy where I was. It was the boat that. The outcrop was about the only feature on the cliff face. It's still creepy. It's very creepy. Could I borrow your net? Yeah, man, no problem. She basically, she hid in the um in the chest and suffocated. Stupid girl. You planning on catching some fish? Nope. I'm after a big rock. <laughs> so if we use the net on the cliff or the rock outcrop. Yep. Yeah. yeah, the whole Emily catch being a ghost thing. Oh, even now it still gives Here me the I willies. Go. Wish me luck, Rio. Good luck, George. Watch out for the walking dead. And the fact that he gave George the willies as well. That's a very well said line though, wait the way he says it, it was you can sort of I hear the fear in his voice. Dark stairwells for what seemed like forever until suddenly I found myself Wow. Oh bloody hell this part. In an abandoned London underground station. This place must have been closed down decades ago. Oh, this part's spooky as well. Not as spooky as talking to a ghost, and then George crapping his pants when he realizes that she's a ghost. But there's certain things in this in this that you can do, um that are very spooky. Let's just leave it at that. 